I want to share something with you, though. I want to look at First uh, Maccabees, the first chapter, and you know, because when you look at religions, you wonder why is it that our people are so caught up in religion? We have, like Romans ten and two said, we have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. So. You wonder why we're so caught up in religion, and especially from the standpoint of how it was presented to us, but we always say in, in slavery, but no, we're going to go back beyond that. Look at uh, our people. So you got to look at the spirit of our people so you see how even when Amashek Abishai came on the earth, he was in the Roman Empire. He wasn't in the Greek Empire, he was in the Roman Empire. So the Greek Empire was taken out from Malachi, the last prophet, to Matthew, because by the time you go from Malachi, which is the Persian Mede Empire, to Matthew, you're in the Roman Empire. So what happened to the Greek Empire? It's right here in the Apocrypha. So you got to look at a lot of things that happened to our people and how our people were sellouts and they went for the abominations of the heathen, especially the so-called uh, white man that was in power you know, in all these different regions that Alexander has set his four generals up to reign in. And we were in those regions as Israelites, and this is what we did. So we know in 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, Alexander the Greek came into power. And he died. He lived, he reigned from 20 years old to 32. He died at the age of 32. So when we look at 1 Maccabees 1 and 9, it says, and after this, after his death, was Alexander the Greek. They all put crowns upon themselves as four generals. So did their sons after them, many years. So after his his four generals died, their sons ruled over us, many years. This is the Greek Empire. This is what it said. And evils were multiplied in the earth, you see. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, came out of the, the so you said dynasty, son of Antiochus the king, who had been in hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. So it's talking about the so-called white people. So-called white man ruling. You see, it says, listen, in those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, from these heathen, we have had much sorrow. <clears throat> Same thing they were saying about worshiping the Queen of Heaven in Jer the books of Jeremiah. So this device pleased them well, you see. So these are wicked men that came out of Israel saying, let us go make a covenant, agreement, a contract with the heathen that are around about us. And all the gods of the heathens are idols. It says in Psalm 96 and 5, it says, so this device, verse 12, pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen to break the Most High's laws, just like it is in these churches. They got license to do wrong. Because what are they doing? They're not following the law. They're telling you you're not under the law. Listen. Whereupon they build a place of exercise. It's like it says. Wicked men, wherefore they build a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised. So that's the place of exercise, like these gyms that they have that you go to today, that's the custom of the heathen. They made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant that the Most High gave to the twelve tribes of Israel. Meaning they left the laws. Uncircumcised meaning they left the laws. It's got your commandments of the Most High and joined themselves to the heathen was sold to do mischief. See? Mischief, evil. Evil, mischief, the same thing. So, they defiled the temple. It was in there sacrificing in the temple. They defiled it. So now I want to show you, go to, uh, you see how they, they, they make places of exercises as the heathen. And they worship idolatry instead of the Most High. Look, uh, 
let me show you, uh, go to uh, these sandboats, uh, 2 Maccabees 4 and 9. It says, beside this, let's see. It's verse 9. Beside this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise. Same thing as wicked Israelites did, right? And for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. Getting our youth. Trained them up in the fashions of the heathen. And to write them of Jerusalem, that's the children of Israel, and to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. Like we Americans, to write us as the Israelites from Jerusalem as Antiochians. Named after Antiochus Epiphanes. Called us An Antiochians. Named after him. Now, did we come from him? No. Same as it is here. Amerigo Vespus. Look up America. You'll see Amerigo Vespus. We call ourselves America. I don't, but people call themselves Americans. Our people, that's the children of Israel. Because we the Israelites. It says, verse 10, which when the king had granted and he had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. See? Brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. This is before Mashiach Yerushai came in the flesh. So when he came on the earth, that's why he had to deal with this. And the royal privileges granted of special favor to the Jews by the means of John, the father of Epolemus, who went ambassador of, to Rome for enmity and aid. He took away and putting down the governments which were according to the law. He put down the governments that was according to the laws of the Most High. He bought up new customs against the law. Hear that? He bought up new customs against the law. So you want to know about your religions? Here it is. To this day. Started way back here. He bought up new customs against the law. Listen. For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them wear a hat. Now such was the height of Greek fashions, an increase of heathenness, manners. You hear that? An increase of heathenness, manners, through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that unrighteous wrench. And no high priest. That the priest had no courage to serve any more at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus called them forth. You know that discus, that little round dish here. They spin around and they throw it out in the Olympics and in some uh, high schools and so forth. Same thing. It says, not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians, best of all. Just like our people today. Liking the glory of the heathen that they're around as it is today. Hear that? But it says, not setting by the honors of their fathers who kept the laws of the Most High, but liking the glory of the Grecians, best of all. By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them. By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them. I'll read you one more time for understanding. By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them. For they had them to be their enemies and avengers, whose custom they followed so earnestly, and to whom they desired to be like in all things. They became enemies and avengers. 
whose customs they followed so earnestly. I want to be like the heathen. Most I told us in Jeremiah 10 and 2, learn not the way of the heathen. You know what it said? Verse 16, by reason whereof sore calamity came upon them. And unto whom they desire to be like in all things. For it is not a light thing to do wickedly against the laws of the Most High. You know what it said? It is not a light thing to do wickedly against the laws of the Most High. But y'all can think, think, think about this how you want it. But the Most High said, For it is not a light thing to do wickedly against the laws of the Most High. But the time following shall declare these things. Now when the game that was used every fifth year was kept at Tyrus, the king being present, this, and you see every fifth year like they do the Olympics so many years, every so many years, it's, even today, it says this ungracious Jason sent special messengers from Jerusalem who were Antiochians. So you know who that is, special messengers from Jerusalem who were Antiochians. Just like a lot of you Americans. You know, you go by the Greek fashion today. His religions, his, his, his false, false uh, politics and trickery education and all the philosophies and so forth that they have you believe in, that the Most High is white. The Mashiach Abishai is white. She's a boy's head. And whoever it is that they said in the Bible to represent the Most High, I don't know who that is, but they, they got him in there. Greek fashions. So you believe that he's a so-called white man like them. And you give them the power. Verse 19. This ungracious Jason sent special messengers from Jerusalem who were Antiochians. We can say who were Americans and not Hebrew Israelites. To carry 300 drowns of silver to the sacrifice of Hercules. Wicked men of Israel. Which even the even the bearers thereof thought thought fit not to bestow upon the sacrifice because it was not convenient, but to res, but to be reserved for other charges. This money then, in regard of the sender, was appointed to Hercules' sacrifice, but because of the bearers thereof, it was employed to the making of galleys. Say monies that they sent to worship who? Hercules. Wicked Israelites. See? This is what we done. So A lot of things happen during this period of time. Look at uh, 2 Maccabees 5 and 1. It says, about the same time, Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Egypt, and then it happened that through all the city, for the space almost of 40 days, y'all listen to this very carefully, and then it happened that through all the city, for the space almost of 40 days, 40 whole days, this occurrence happened. There were sent horsemen running in the air in cloth of gold and armed with lances like a band of soldiers. They sent us in the air. And troops of horsemen in array, in coloring and running one against another with shaking of shields, a multitude of spikes, and drawing of swords, and casting of darts, throwing darts, and having swords, and glittering of golden ornaments, and harness of all sorts. Wherefore, every man prayed that that apparition might turn to good. But when there was a, and it went, now when there was gone forth a false rumor, as though Antiochus had been dead, Jason took at the least a thousand men and suddenly made an assault upon the city 
and they that were upon the walls being put back and the city of Liv taken, Menelaus fled into the castle. He ran, but Jason slew his own citizens without mercy, not considering that to get the day of them of his own nation would be a most unhappy day for him. But thinking they had been his enemies and not his countrymen whom he conquered, albeit for all this he obtained not the principality but at the last received shame for the reward of his treason and fled again into the country of the Ammonites, one amongst the so-called Japanese. In the end thereof, he had an unhappy return, being accused before Aratus the king of the Arabians, fleeing from city to city, running, pursuing of all men, hated, as a forsaker of the laws, and being had in abomination as an open enemy of his country and countrymen, he was cast out into Egypt. He said, thus he had, thus he that had driven many out of their country perished in a strange land, retired to the Lacedaemon money, money ends, and thinking there to find secure or safety by reason of his kindred. And he that had cast out many unburied had none to mourn for him. Nobody cared about him. Nor any solemn funerals at all. Nor scepters with his fathers. I mean, he wasn't buried with his fathers. Check out Antiochus destroying Jerusalem. Now when this was now now when this that was done came to the king's ear, Antiochus, Pythias, he thought that Judea had revolted. Whereupon removing out of Egypt in a furious mind, he took the city by force of arms and commanded his men of war not to spare such as they met, kill everybody, and, and to slay such as went up upon the houses. So all those went up on the houses, kill them. Thus there was killing of young and old, making away of men, women, and children, slain of virgins and infants, even babies, being killed. This is taken out of the regular Bible. This is our story. And there were destroyed within the space of three whole days, four score thousand. But surely you know about this, right? Surely the Jewish people is crying out about this Holocaust, right? No. No, I have nothing to say about this. This could because it wasn't them, it was us, the true 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 14 again, and they were destroyed within the space of three whole days. Three days. I mean, they killed four score thousand. A score is 20. 20 times four is eight. 80,000 in three days. This our friend? This someone that love us? And they were destroyed within the space of three whole days, four score thousand. That's 80,000, where of 40,000 were slain in the conflict, and no fewer soul than slain. Yet was he not content with this, 80,000. He wasn't content with this, but presumed to go into the most holy temple of all the world. Menelaus, that traitor to the laws, to his own country, being his guide. Sambos, wicked men of Israel, and taking the holy vessels with polluted hands and with profane hands, pulling down the things that were dedicated by 
other kings to the argumentation and glory and honor of the place he gave them away. And so haunting was Antiochus in mind that he considered not that the Most High was angry for wow for the sins of them that dwelt in the city. Therefore his eyes was not upon the place. For had they not been formed, formerly wrapped in many sins, this man, as soon as he had come, had forthwith seen scores, had, excuse me, had forthwith been scores, and put back from his presumption as Heliodorus was, whom Seleucus the king sent to view the treasury. Nevertheless, the Most High did not choose the people for the place's sake, but the place for the people's sake. Therefore the place itself that was partaken with them of the adversity that happened to the nation did afterward communicate in the benefits sent from the Most High. And as it was forsaken in the wrath of the Almighty, so again the great Almighty, Most High, being reconciled, it was set up with all glory. So when Antiochus had carried out of the temple a thousand and eight hundred talents robbing our temple, he departed in all haste unto Antiochia, weaned in his pride to make the land navigable and the sea passable by foot. Such was the haughtiness or the pridefulness of his mind. And he left governors to vex the nation. He left governors in the city to vex us as the children of Israel. Jerusalem, Philip, for his country, and Phrygian, and for manners more bar barbarous than he that set him there. And at Gerizim, and Troncus, and besides Menelaus, who worse then all the rest bear an heavy hand over the citizens having a, a malicious mind against his countrymen, the Jews. Malicious means angry, angry. Angry without a cause. He have no reason to be angry, but he's angry with us. He said also that the testable ringleader Apollonius, with an army of two and three thousand, commanding him to slay all those that were in their best age and to sell the women. Hear that? And the younger sword. Slay all those of the Israelites that were in their best age. Prime of life. Kill them. And to sell the women. See, I was going to say, women were just sold. They were, they were just like you, you, you kill the army. You take the spoil off of them, that's how women were. So, sell the women and the younger sort, and the young maids and young men. And coming to Jerusalem and pre pretending peace, pretending peace, just the devil, this forbear till the holy day of the Sabbath. When taking the Jews, keeping holy day, he commanded his men to arm themselves. And so he slew all them that were gone to the ceremony celebrating of the Sabbath. And also he slew all of them. You see, pretending peace. Pretending peace. Like uh, Mars attack. We come for peace. They will shoot everybody. The same here. Pretending peace. Against those Israelites that were keeping the holy day, the Sabbath, he commanded his men to arm themselves. And so he slew all of them that were gone to the celebrating of the Sabbath. And running through the city with weapons slew great multitudes. Before we went to. So, verse 27, but Judas Maccabees 
with nine others and or thereabout withdrew himself into the wilderness and lived in the mountains after the manner of beasts with his company who fed on herbs continually lest they should be partakers of the pollution everything was polluted so we round it up it says chapter 6 says, now long after this the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers over and over again what do you think you're doing whenever you still have a Christian mind just what he says here to depart from the laws of their fathers because you're not thinking about the laws of the most high because you've been taught you're not under the law but you're under mercy and grace and you're a Gentile you're grafting in among who? Grafted in among who? That's why when you look at the original word Christian, it means stupid. And you think about it. Now that you know that you're supposed to do the certain, certain, certain things that you're supposed to do, we as the Israelites, and you still have the mindset that you don't have to do that. You don't, I don't know about that. I ain't got to do that. I don't do that. Or even if you think and don't inquire about what's right from wrong, then you're still stupid. Because you're going to be thrown in the lake of fire, point blank. You got a choice to life, keeping the laws of the Most High, having faith in the Mashiach, Yom Shai, fearing the Most High, by doing what he say, do his rules of revelation, or you got a choice to choose death, that lake of fire. It says, not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers. Don't that sound like Christianity? And not to live after the law of the Most High. Laws of the Most High. Not to live after the laws of the Most High. Isn't that what they say? You ain't under the law? I mean, I'm looking for some answers here. You out there that's Christians, or that you that believe that you ain't got to follow the Most High's laws. That's where it started from. This is the Greek Empire. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call in the temple of Jupiter, call it the temple of Jupiter, Olympias, and in Gazarim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in this place. The coming in, I mean, you know, different planets and so forth, all kind of madness. Like the heathen, they say the coming in of this mischief, it's not right, was sore and grievous to the people. Those that are the one third of the twelve tribes, this is the two thirds that you ain't good for nothing. But the lake of fire, as it is written, that's where you're going. If you don't repent and come back to the law, that's come out of the most high. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. It says, verse 4, for the temple was filled with riot and revelings by the Gentiles. They just disrespected our temple. Who dallied with harlots, that's prostitutes, hoes, selling their body for money, having sex, and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. Having sex with these harlots, these prostitutes in the temple. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. Besides that, brought in things to the temple that were not lawful. The altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbidden, which the law forbidden. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Could keep no more Sabbath days, no more new moons, no more ancient feasts. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. You couldn't even say you was an Israelite. You couldn't say that. Your forefather was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you do you are, you are an Israelite of the tribe of Judah. You couldn't even say that. Of the tribe of Benjamin, of the tribe of Levi, of the tribe of Zebulun, any of the tribes. You couldn't say that. It's the law. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. That's why he us out. Mentally and spiritually. Because you can't change the fact that you're an Israelite. Physically born an Israelite. Can't change that. 
But what he did was what he did was change the mindset, just like it is today. I mean, it's no different. I mean, look, go to uh, Psalms 83 chapter. What's the difference? Already prophesied about this wickedness. Psalms 83 chapter. All these nations. Like all them heathen nations was following ways of the heathen, here they are right here. Psalm 83 and 1. Keep not thy silence, O Most High. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O Most High. For lo, thine enemies, O Most High, and the Mashiach of Shai have enemies. For lo, thine enemies, make a turmoil, that's an uproar, shouting out, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, who are the twelve tribes of Israel, and, against, and the consoled against thy hidden ones. Look what they did. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So now, what are they doing? I mean, what's the difference between that and this? 2 Maccabees 6 and 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So what do you think is happening? They're taking the name of Israel out of existence with our people here. Not only that, let's keep on reading. It says, and in the day of the king's birth, king's birthday, you know, that's why we ain't celebrating no birthday. You're not supposed to be celebrating birthday. Listen to what, you know, birthday, they cut off John the Baptist's head. The other birthday, and the brother and the uh, cast and deal with Joseph in the uh, prison when Joseph was in prison, you know cut his head off on the king's birthday, so I mean, Mashiach of Shai, you talk about his birthday, but he didn't say worship his birthday, he said worship his death, remember do this remembrance of me, because he died for the sins of we the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat other sacrifices, you know it's abominations, and by constraint made them eat them, and when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in possession to Bacchus, carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of the Ptolemy against the Jews, that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. See? And who so would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the great present misery. Now for you women it says, but there were two women brought who had circumcised their children on the eighth day you circumcised the boys. When, when they had openly Led round about the city, the babes hanging at their breasts, tied the babies to their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. And others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly. Remember? In verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Verse 11, and others that had run together into caves, had to hide in caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly, to keep the Sabbath day secretly so they wouldn't know that we're keeping the Sabbath day. This is how important this is. It's the day of the Most High. It says, being discovered to Philip were all burnt together. They burned them up because they had, because they made a conscious to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. That they had made an honor of the most sacred day. Now here we are coming up with excuses or trying to find ways to 
justify following the way of the heathen. The things that they set up for us to follow, that's wrong. The most I gave us law, statute, commandments. This is the most I gave us. Go to Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalm 147, 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. I mean, he showed other nations his laws, statutes, and judgments, and commandments and judgments. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. The nations have not known them, but we have. Praise ye the most high. Psalm 70, 85. So once we knew the laws of the most high, that's when he gave us a commandment. This eliminates religion. Psalm 70, 85. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So these laws must be made known to the children that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born who should arise and declare them to their children the laws of the Most High. That they might set their hope in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High but keep His commandments. See? They might set their hope or their faith in the Most High and not in man or woman and not forget the, or any kind of uh, entity that you want to look at it and create it as a God, a power. It says, they might set their hope in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High, but keep His commandments. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with the Most High. See? So, you see, This is what we were up against in trying to bring this truth back into the world because our people have been programmed. Their minds have been polluted through here. We went all the way back to the beginning of the Greek Empire. Now by the time we go into Matthew, we're in the Romans Empire. When the Mashiach of is being born, he's born in the Roman Empire. Which you had all those years of the Greek Empire to going into the Roman Empire, and here he is in the Roman Empire where you still have these same Israelites, wicked Israelites, I might say, that have the mindset that we're not Israelites. It's against the law to claim to be a Jew. That's why a lot of times you see people whenever they uh, uh, believe in the Mashiach Mashiach, couldn't believe in them because around the Pharisees and the chief high priest because they say anybody believing them can't come, can't, can't come in here. They were so afraid of losing their power with who? The Romans. They said they got to do something to them. Especially when he, uh, when he uh, raised Lazarus from the dead. After he had been dead for four days, they said, oh, we got to get rid of this guy. Because we're going to lose our power with the Romans. They will come and take away us and all and our nation. Our position that we have, that they had. So that's like people today. These pastors, they hooked into the government. They got hooked into the Romans. With the Romans today. So you up there with them too. You join with them. If that's what you believe and not the word of the most high. So it is what it is.